Hello there, welcome to the June 2018 applied paper. Here we're looking at question 9. A plank AB of mass M and length 2L rests with its end A against a rough vertical wall. The plank is held in horizontal position by a rope. One end of the rope is attached to the plank at B and the other end is attached to the wall at point C which is vertically above A. A small block of mass 3M is placed on the plank at the point P where AP is equal to X. The plank is in equilibrium and in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to the wall. The angle between the rope and the plank is alpha where tan of alpha is 3 over 4 as shown in figure 3. The plank is modelled as a uniform rod, the block is modelled as a particle and the rope is modelled as a light inextensible string. Using the model show that the tension in the rope is this expression here. OK, let's start adding some stuff to our diagram. Now, we're saying that the plank is modelled as a uniform rod and the rod has a mass of m. So halfway in that rod, we have a mass m. We also have the mass p, which is 3m as well. So that's going to be mg and 3mg. Uh, the tension in the rope will be going in this direction. So if we resolve it, it's going to be travelling upwards with T. Now, if we resolve it upwards, it would be on this left-hand side here. It's the left-hand side of the triangle. It's going to be T sine alpha. So this is T sine alpha. Um, so that's all we've got so far. Uh, we also know that tan of alpha is equal to 3 over 4. So therefore, cos of alpha is 4 fifths and sine of alpha is 3 fifths. Now what we have to do here is show that the tension in the rope is equal to this expression here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take moments about this point A. Now I've not drawn all the forces into the diagram. There's going to be some forces at um, A. I think there's going to be a force upwards at A and a force outwards at A because of the friction. So this is going to be the reaction force at A and this is going to be the frictional force at A. Um, so, so these are, aren't the only forces on the diagram, we have these forces as well, but if we take moments about A, then it will eliminate these two forces because they are um, equal, to their distance of zero away from point A. So if we take moments about A, remember taking a moment is equal to distance times force. So it's going to be equal to, uh, let's do the mg one first, amg, so A is the distance, um, because it's in the center of the rod, and the rod has a mass of mg. Now let's do this particle p. It's going to have a distance x and a mass of, sorry, a weight of 3mg, so it's going to be 3x mg. And this is going to equal t sine alpha, and sine alpha is 3 fifths, so it's going to be 3 fifths t. Okay, the next thing to do might be to factorise the mg out of this. So it's going to be mg, um, uh, no, so, and then the, so the, I haven't finished this one here. The force is 3 over 5t, and then it's times the distance of 2a, so times 2a. So it's going to be, on the left-hand side, factorising mg um, 3x plus a. Hey, this is looking like it's forming the right kind of thing, equals, let's simplify the right-hand side, 6 over 5a t. Let's times by 5, and then divide by 6a, and there we are. We've proven our, um, proven that our tension is equal to that expression there. Okay, so moving on to part B, the magnitude of the horizontal component of the force exerted by the plane A and the wall, by the wall, is 2mg. So that's this reaction force here. What I'm talking about by this reaction force here is that this, this pole, this rod, is being pushed into the wall. That's how it's effectively being kept in position. And the reaction force of the wall back onto the rod is R. So the horizontal component there is R, and what they're referring to in this question here is that that force there is equal to 2mg. Now, given that the tension is equal to this expression here, the tension, so that if we resolve that force and it's going to go that way, that's going to equal T cos alpha. So work out X in terms of A. I think we'll have to use this information. So it's going to be T cos alpha equals 2mg. 
Those are basically the only two horizontal forces on my diagram. The rest of it is vertical. So it's going to therefore be 5mg 3x plus a over 6a times by cos alpha, which is 4 fifths, equals 2mg. Now let's simplify what we've got here. We've got mg's that cancel. We've got uh, a fifth down here and a five there that will cancel. We've got um, uh, three uh, factors of two here and another factor of two on both sides there. So we've just got one left on the right hand side there. Now if I times over by three, um, so three a, then that's going to give me three x plus a equals three a and then subtract the a onto the other side that's going to be three x equals two a and then times so divide by three i'm going to get x equals two thirds a so actually the particle p is on this side here uh, two thirds of the distance from a um well two thirds of a which is the distance from a to p so there we are that's our answer for part b OK, moving on to part C, the force exerted on the plank by the wall acts in a direction that makes an angle beta with the horizontal. Find the value of tan beta. Now what the, they're referring to here, the force exerted on the plank by the wall, um, so that's this force here, the combination of R and friction. So if we, if we draw a little, if we think of this as point A and have R this way and friction up this way, so just moving the friction over to this side now, then we're working out this value here, beta or tan beta. Okay, so we know R, R is equal to 2mg, now we need to work out what the frictional value is equal to. And the frictional value will be, um, we'll find that when we resolve the forces up and down. We're told that it's in equilibrium in the vertical plane, um, so therefore it is, um, the forces will balance. So the frictional force upwards, and also this T sine alpha force, those are the two upwards forces, will balance out with the two forces downwards that will combine to make 4mg. But to find the value of friction we probably want to take this T sine alpha onto the other side so it's going to be 4mg minus T and we'll actually bring in T now and then times it by 3 fifths at the end because that's what sine alpha is equal to. So it's going to be 5mg and I think what I'll do is I'll replace x with 2 thirds a. So when I do 3x, that's going to be 2a. So that's going to be 3a inside there over 6a. That's going to be the tension times by sine alpha. That's going to be 3 fifths. So, let's, uh, so that's friction. Uh, so that's, yeah. 4mg minus friction minus tension times sine alpha. Okay, good. Let's cancel out this um, thing here. So we'll have that. That will cancel out with that. Leave a 2 on the bottom. So it's going to be the friction equals 4mg minus, uh, looks like it's going to be, a's will cancel on top and bottom as well, 3 over 2mg. So what that's going to leave us with is it's going to be 5 over 2 mg as the value of the friction. So now on this side of the triangle here we have 5 over 2 mg and this side on the triangle here we're going to have as 2 mg. So now to work out what beta is equal to, no we want to work out what tan of beta is equal to. Tan of beta is equal to the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. So doing opposite, 5 over 2, I'll cancel out the mg's now. 5 over 2 divided by 2, that's going to be 5 over 4. So there we are, the answer to that part there was 5 over 4. The key to that question was resolving up and down to balance out the forces going upwards and the forces downwards and identifying that friction will be a force going upwards and then making yourself a little triangle so that you can work out what tan of beta is equal to. And moving on to part D. The rope will break if the tension uh, in it exceeds 5 mg. Explain how this will restrict the possible position of P. You must justify your answer. OK, so what we'll probably assume here is that P can change position um, away from um, 
away from the current position it's in. So what we want here is for the tension to be less than or equal to 5mg. So if we now put the tension in there, 5mg brackets 3x plus a over 6a has to be less than or equal to 5mg. Let's now rearrange this. Let's move 6a up to the other side. We could actually cancel out the mg's now. Why not? So it's going to be 15x plus 5a is less than or equal to 6a. No, not 6a. When we times it to the other side, that's going to be 30a. Take away the 5a onto the other side, and that's going to give us 25a. And then divide by 15, that's going to give us uh, t is less than or equal to 5 thirds a. So there we are. That's the restriction that we have to have on x. It can't move into that final sixth of the um, diagram here, the, the third a. It has to be from this position here at 5 thirds a. Remember the total length of it's 2a, so it'd be 6 thirds as a total length. So 5 thirds anywhere in this portion here otherwise the string will break. So there we are, so it's x is less than um, 5 over 3a, explain how this will restrict, um, so therefore the, if the rope will not break it must not move further than 5a over 3. So x has to be in between 0 to 5 thirds a, otherwise it will break, otherwise the rope will break. rope will break. Okay, so there we are. That's our answer for question 9 with a whopping 13 marks in total for that question there. Let's now move on to the final question in the paper, question 10.